Hi everybody, it's Ryan from Ryviews.com, and today I'm doing a Rye play of Caribbean Admiral 2, which is a sequel to Caribbean Admiral 1, if that wasn't obvious. Uh, I'm assuming it was, who knows. Here's a link to the first one. Uh, you can find a link to this game, Caribbean Admiral 2, in the comments. This game is by somebody. Let's do a quick scroll here. It's by Vogd or something. Not quite sure what that means. I'm moving on. So I've already played this game quite a bit. Um, as you can see here, I have some beefy ships. You can see here too, I have lots of places unlocked and so forth. So essentially, I wanted to play through this game for quite a while, but I didn't get around to Rye playing it, so now it's a Rye play late in the game. Uh, why am I not Rye viewing it? Well, that's because I'm a little lazy, and also because I'm still a little stressed and don't have a whole lot of time to put forth the extra editing time to make something in Excel. Um, I'm sorry, but I'll try to walk through the stages here, um, but ultimately it's going to be kind of more of a spur-of-the-moment Rye play style high points, I suppose. So here's the game. Uh, I have very, very high level ships, so when you start out your ships are much more dinky and you also start with just one. Uh, but essentially, you lob cannonballs at the bad guys, like that, and you try to take them down with your ships. And then they shoot you, and this late in the game they shoot you very ineffectively. And then you shoot them some more and slaughter them. It's a fun game. Uh, there actually is quite a bit of strategy involved in these actual fights because you're able to choose different uh, perks that you have that you get to assign to your ships uh, through some menu. Let's see, it's, yeah, let me pair these guys through a little chest here. You can assign perks. I'm particularly fond of the ice perk, which lets you freeze bad guys. Do I get a scroll over text to see what they do? No, I will not. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Um, I enjoy that aspect of being able to apply different skills to your ships. I also like the fact that you're able to upgrade your ships. Um, this is one of the games where you have to balance your upgrades versus your new ships. Um, when you upgrade something, you don't keep the upgrades for your future ships. But as you can see here, you're actually able to uh, buy these ships, I think, for a refund. Um, so you're able to save some money that way. And I just got my money back. And if you try to upgrade that ship now, you lost the upgrades, but otherwise you keep the money for the change. So um, it's there's some balancing act, but I don't know why you'd ever want to go back to a lesser ship anyway. Um, I also enjoy the fact that this game is largely based around trading, where you can see here, this is a good price for rice. So I'm going to buy a bunch, and you ferry it over to some other place, like a nearby town, and see, this rice is cost 100 more here. So you sell it, and you made a bunch of money on selling rice. Pretty exciting. Do the same thing for corn. Go over here. I'm going to sell some corn. And that's how you amass your fortune of gold. I have 527,000 pieces of gold, so that's pretty exciting. Um, I enjoy that you're able to move money around and such. You know, That's a nice layer to the game. Um, I also kind of like you know, you're kind of moving around and there's some random encounters, but it's a bit of like an exploration type thing where you're going around. You have to pick quests by going to cities and clicking on dudes and skipping through text that you don't want to read. Quite frankly, too, it's not super important because it'll just tell you exactly what you need to go do. Um, I have not found a single item where it's important to read the text. Oh my, that's a gigantic question mark that I probably have to kill. I'm guessing it's the final boss, so I don't necessarily want to spoil what's going to happen. Uh, but long story short, I've been going around these cities and trying to make them all happy with me, mostly by selling them stuff and killing bad dudes. Um, and for different cities, bad dudes are different people. Uh, but, you know, one guy's bad dude is another guy's... Pointless random encounters, so who knows. Sometimes the enemy fires first. It's very annoying. But then you get to fire back. I'm actually not doing this strategically, because you should try to fire the ice to freeze the dudes. That's what happens when you fire the ice, by the way. Um, and if you plan it accordingly, it's actually easier for you to use the ice and not waste energy points every time. Um, as you're injured, you lose some energy. Um, so that's a nice little layer of... Um, Kind of planning in the game, I suppose. Bam. Ice that dude. Twice. Once you ice them, by the way, they can they lose a turn, which is pretty exciting. 
There are other perks too, but I've really only enjoyed using the ice one because that's by far the most useful one. There's fire damage, but the the lasting damage is pretty damn low, so it's not particularly useful. Um, ice wastes a whole turn, so that means they lose that entire attack. And some enemies, if they're attacking like that, that 55, sometimes the attacks are for hundreds. So it's pretty useful to freeze somebody. What just happened? Oh, he only had nine. Damn. Wasted him. Oh, they're both frozen. Kill him. Bam! And he's about to explode. Yeah. That felt good. So this is Kirby Emerald 2. I think I played the first one. It's been a while. Um, but this one, I, I don't really remember uh, the, the streamline of this game. This is much more kind of polished than I remember the first one being. I also don't recall seeing these little tips on the outside where, hey, look, wine is expensive here, corn is pretty cheap, and steel is expensive here, and rum is expensive here, but rice is cheap. So I don't recall having that. Um, and otherwise, since I don't remember, it's kind of, you know, it's basically a new game again. I have not bought the premium. Uh, I must log in before I use it. Um, but the premium seems to not be particularly useful because you can get almost infinite money just by trading back and forth really damn fast. Um, so unless you are super impatient, or unless you hate economics, um, the premium is almost certainly not worth paying for. Um, now, as I always say, if you feel like supporting the game, it's a very good idea to just go ahead and support the game. But on the same token, you should not buy it too advanced in the game, as I was just saying. I think it's a waste of your money if you're doing that. But, quite frankly, it's a good game. I think it'd be worth paying some money for. So if you feel like donating... This is a fantastic opportunity to make your funitude known to the developer. Thanks, everybody. Visit www.ryviews.com for more rambling. And I've been Ryan from ryviews.com. Please subscribe. Uh, there should be a button somewhere to do so. If there isn't, then I've gotten super lazy. Thanks for watching, everybody. Until next time, bye-bye.